Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have a nice game to share with you from the 56th and final round of the Top Chess Engine Championship Season 28 Premier Division. Played August 23rd. On the white end, Leela Chess 0, rated 36.92. Playing against Integral, rated 35.76. Alright, with this one, we work with an open Sicilian. We're not at the start position just yet. Small pawn center. G4, the carries attack. And at this point right here, after knight F to D7, this is our start position. When these two played with colors reversed from this start position, integral with the white pieces, won. Uh, I'll, share, uh, I'll share with you where play deviates. In the two games, we're not far off from that. In both games, we saw uh, bishop e3. And when Leela had the black pieces, Leela continued here with knight c6. Integral with the black pieces in this one continues with b5. Expansion. More expansion. Queen d2. Knight c6. And let me throw this position to you as a pop quiz. How would you continue here? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, the opening middle game phase are uh, the phases I find most interesting with this game. Uh, the pawn play in particular. Leela continues here with e5. And the response is d5. What other option does black have here? In this situation, there's a problem here on c6. I, I tested out a couple of moves. Uh, if you're capturing on d4, this is not a good path because there's bishop captures bishop. You're on the rook. Let's say the rook reacts. Uh, there's queen captures knight. This is really simplest. If pawn takes, queen e4 is there hanging on to the piece. And if black simply recaptures here, white's... Uh, crushing. Just want a big pawn. Target the bishop. So that wouldn't be a good line. And what would also not be a good line is to react to e5 with queen c7. In response to queen c7, you're asking for the capture on d6. And now what? If black recaptures with the queen, there's knight captures knight. And with the queen's intention, the queen on d6, not a reliable defender of uh, c6. So bishop takes, queen takes, bishop captures bishop, whites up a piece. And if black in this position responds to this capture with bishop captures, there's this trick. Capture on b5 with the fork. A new knight ready to replace the one on b5. This is a crushing line. So, the response in this one to e5 is d5. Have a more static game ahead. We see the knight exchange and a quick reposition to blockade this pawn. Knight maneuvering to d4. Bishop backs off. h4. And from here, black goes with queenside castles. What other option does the king have? If you go kingside... Way too risky with these two pawns already in Black's camp. Uh, it says you could already run with g6 in this position. Can't take away from the center. e6 collapses. And after pawn takes, it doesn't want to run in for h5 straight away. Uh, it says just casually go ahead and complete development. Castle queenside. And this is always on the cards. Black always... Pretty much has to respond to h5 with g5, ensuring the h-file doesn't easily open up. But even in these situations, h5, g5, and a capture, those two pawns on g5, h5 are very strong. To demonstrate one line, let's say the knight improves a couple times and we see this exchange on e4, h5. g5 takes, queen takes e5, these pawns roll, and now what? You want to keep the h file shut with g6, hang on, there's h7, you got to go to a dark square, and all of a sudden there's tricks like this. 
follow-up pin. Okay, my point, castling kingside for black at this point right here, far too risky. We have queenside castles, kingside castles. From here we have g6. If black tries to pry open the h-file with h6, that's going to be met with g6, striking the base point, undermining e6. So the start here is with g6, maybe next, h6. Now, h6 never ends up being played in this one um, to pry open uh, the file for the rook. Even if that happened, I'm not so sure there's enough room in a way for the black pieces to cause the white king a headache. From here, a4, the response, capture on a4. Now, why the capture on a4? Why not maybe try and keep things shut? Well, if you play with b4, has its eye next on rook f c1 and a c3 break. One way or another, trying to open up a file. We have the capture. And no recapture in this one. Instead, it is b3. Really love the pawn play in this one. If you take with the rook, that runs into knight b6 and then knight c4 with the fork. So we have b3. b3 covers c4, and c4 may soon be an idea now. The response, king b8. Let's look at a few different options black uh, may have here. First of all, if you capture on b3, thank you for the open c file, that would be terrible. Playing king b8 in this position, uh, this is big trouble. Queen b6, not safe. Knight c6 is there. Queen is uh, experiencing a problem. So no way are we going to see this capture. Uh, what about uh, a push? In the case of a3, it's looking forward to rook fc1 and c4. Uh, also, it's looking in response to knight c5, uh, this same move. Okay, anything else? One final move. Let's say knight b6. Uh, this knight is not stable. It's boxed out currently by the b-pawn. From here it has its eye on queen f2. And tricks are in the air. Unleashing the bishop, unleashing the battery. So, integral's response to b3 at the end of the day is king b8. Now we have the capture. Now there is no quick ID of knight b6 into c4. Follow up knight c5. Rook a2. Keeping this square open for the rook. Knight e4. Queen d3. Saying, I can work around your knight. It's not a bother. Now from here we have rook d7. If the knight returns to c5, it says just back off to e2. Things are cool on that square. Also, this is not a bother. The knight can hang out in your camp as long as it's not connected with any other black piece. You work around it. Go ahead. You could have the g3 square. I'm not inconvenienced. I go to a1, form a battery, and look forward to a possible sacrifice. All right. After queen d3, rook d7, double up, bishop c5. Pop quiz, how would you respond here? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, one of the top moves is the exchange sacrifice on a6. However, at the very top is the move in the game, b4. What's happening with b4? b4 is attracting the bishop to a more vulnerable square. This is what we see. In the game, it's bishop captures pawn. Now, if this is declined, if the bishop goes, backs off, let's test out each. This one is simple enough. Bishop a7 can be met with b5. Things are getting broken down uh, along the a file. Things are slightly different in the case of bishop b6. If b5, there's now a5. 
In response to bishop b6, this is where it says you can now go for this exchange sacrifice, and there is a problem now on this b6 square. Knight c5 or c6 is an idea. Unleashing the bishop. Okay. In this one, we see the capture on b5, and now the follow-up c4. This is so sharp. Such a cool follow-up. Now what? In the game, rook c8 is played. What happens if pawn takes pawn? This is the point of that earlier b4 move. This is where it really shows up. We would have this cute move, queen b1, targeting the bishop, the unprotected bishop, while also maintaining pressure on e4. There's no good move here for black. In response to either bishop move targeting the knight, even if it is targeting this rook, there is bishop captures knight regardless of where the dark square bishop goes. This is winning. Uh, another move that is available in the case of bishop c5 is rook captures a6. There is a pin on the b-file looking forward to a mate on a8. So we do not see pawn captures pawn. Also, what would happen if queen captures pawn? This is a simpler line. You just take the knight. Pawn takes, drops the queen. Queen takes, you recapture with the bishop, you're up the piece. Fancy move. B4 coupled with now C4. In this one, we have rook C8. Capture on D5. And now we have a skewer. Going to win some material shortly. This is going to liquidate quite a bit from here. We have a forceful line coming up. Queen's now coming off. Bishop tracking the rook. A check. Grabbing the dark square bishop. And... Let's see the conversion from here. These pawns are going to drop off, and Leela's going to be uh, reorganizing with the two rooks and the knight. Let's see how this plays out. Tracking the A pawn, bishop is hit, goes to c8. Uh, if you take the knight, we're going to see that this bishop ends up uh, being tracked. So I tested it out. Okay, why not maybe give up the bishop for the knight? There's a problem. And these two rooks are enough to weave a mate. King is cut off here. We don't see bishop for knight exchange, bishop c8, rook b8, f pawn falls, knight reposition, h pawn falls with check, g pawn falls, d pawn falls, and eventually this bishop is going to fall. Doesn't have a, a safe square at the moment. Have this punch thrown at the knight. Check. King returns. Hitting the knight, defending the bishop. Knight b5. We sidestep the checks. No pawns for white. We got a check. And now what? In the game, we have king e6. Uh, your other option to try and stay defending the bishop if you go here, uh, that runs into rook c7. And next up, have this mate idea. So in this one it is king e6. Knight saves itself before tracking the bishop and we play this imbalance. A rook versus three passed pawns, three connected passed pawns that are set back. They're not close enough to promotion to pose a serious threat. Let's see Leela's conversion from here. Integral tries to hide at this point here, this is questioned. The king immediately comes back out of returns to f6. I tested something else out. Let's say, rather than undoing your last move, let's say h5 is played. Uh, that could run into this trouble. Knight e4. No f6, no g5. There's already a mate in 3 idea. Rook's on g8 and h8 for mate. Okay, no h5, king f6, knight check, king lured out now, and beautiful coordination here. Knight stays in a very healthy square. The rooks are in a spot, either rook, to potentially question the king, who's now cut off, has to work on white side of the board, doesn't have the ability 
uh, it seems at this stage to now try and hide behind these pawns, use them for cover. So we have king f3, king d2, knight reposition, tames this piece a little bit. Knight g5, rook a4, this secures the king post for the moment. The follow-up from here is king to f2. Uh, if you try this check, there's rook captures knight. King takes and then a fork on g3. So king f2 it is. Rook c2. Check. The king can leave. Knight is defended. Discovered check nearby. Rook g4, rook e1. And eventually we're going to have a finishing combo coming up with rook g3 check, king e4, and finally uh, we could go ahead for this sacrifice on g5. Uh, if the rook is captured, we have the follow-up knight c3. Yet another fork. But how it plays out on this one, the rook is saved, and now we're looking at what? A rook and knight versus two or excuse me, three connected pass pawns. So let us just see the conversion. Now it's the black pawns that fall one by one. And eventually we're going to have checkmate uh, in the middle here with the two rooks. Rook one to f4, move 80 for mate. So a nice game here out of the carries attack. Uh, I was really uh, enjoying the pawn play in particular with this one in the opening middle game phases. Anyhow, your thoughts with this one? Feel free as usual to leave any feedback to this video in the comments section below. Hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care.